I'm feeling inspired after just watching the new Dune movie, so I want to try out drawing a desert map. So my pal Bob World Builder made an excellent video about making prop maps for your D&D game. And he came up with a really interesting way of staining the map to give it that, you know, old parchment feel by using soy sauce, uh, an alternate to soaking a piece of paper in tea. I thought this was super cool and have been dying to try it. And now that I've got this itch to draw a desert map, it just feels like a fun combination. So let's jump into it. So I'm gonna be using some watercolor paper. This is gonna soak up the soy sauce so you don't have to bake the paper like Bob did in, in his video. I'll also be using just a, a cheap wide paintbrush and some cheap brown colored pencils to actually draw the map. So I did a little test on a separate sheet of paper and I determined that the just straight 100% soy sauce was a little too dark looking for my taste. I think it's perfect for a, a pirate treasure map or an old parchment look, but I kind of want to make this look more sandy. So I'm going to lighten it up by adding a little bit of water to the soy sauce, about one part soy sauce to three or four parts water. I'm giving it a good mix, and I really suggest you test this out on a, a scrap sheet of paper first, just in case you, you don't like the, the way your mixture looks. As it turns out, soy sauce isn't quite as easy to adjust and manipulate as watercolor paint. I'm actually really surprised at how great the color is and how even the coverage is. It's definitely more controllable than just soaking a piece of paper in some tea and then baking it, but it's also not as controllable as even the the cheapest watercolor paint. Plus your map is gonna smell like soy sauce and so are your hands and your studio. So yeah, the soy sauce is convenient and it has surprisingly good results, but honestly, if you're gonna be taking the time to, to draw your own map, just get some cheap watercolor, some brown and some yellow, mix them together. You'll probably have a, a much easier time. Okay, I'm gonna let my watercolor soy sauce paper dry. And while that's happening, I'm gonna figure out how to draw a desert map. So let's start with the sand dunes. I learned this from map effects on Instagram, just following their wonderful little four part tutorial. Basically you do a, a sweeping curved line. Think of this like the, the peak of your sand dune and then you pull lines downwards from the corner, you know, like the, the sand is sliding down the dune. And then finally you just pick one of the sides and shade it in to sort of, you know, give it that sun blasted look. Now the key to these dunes I figured out is to make sure you begin and end the, the peak line with a downward curve in the, the same direction. And this is the real key to give your sand dunes a, a sort of mountain range like appearance. You know, it places them on the map. Now, even though I'm showing you how to draw this stuff, I think it's really, really important to practice on a scrap sheet of paper a few times. And even though it's just a few curved lines, it's a little bit trickier than I thought. So it really took me a few tries to, to figure out exactly how to draw these things. Now that we got our dunes, it's time to figure out all the unique locations of this desert. I want there to be a dead forest and a dungeon, some sort of fort and tents, some wind farms, some ruins, and an oasis. You know, as I'm figuring out how to draw each of these little icons, I can't help but think up fun stories and imagine how fun it would be to run this desert location as a, a tabletop role-playing game. So all of these icons are very, very easy to draw, much easier than the sand dunes, actually. They're all icons that I've drawn in past videos, so you can check those out. Or if you need a little more help, I've made a few map drawing guides. You can get the physical versions from my online shop or the digital PDFs by joining my Patreon. I'm really proud of the work that I put into these zines. I think they're super helpful and a great way to get started drawing maps. Okay, I'm also drawing a, a rocky ridge line. I'm imagining that this map will be a, a low flat desert, like it, it used to be an ocean or something and now it's all dry. So I'm figuring out how to draw these cliffs as a, a way to sort of frame in the, the main location on this map. 
And because I'm super inspired by Dune, I have to draw a giant sandworm. This is gonna be the big decoration in the corner of the map, sort of like a big danger sign. Like once you leave this area of this map, you're entering the, the unknown world of the sandworm, of the Shai Hulud. Okay, I've got my icons figured out. Now it's time to jump into the final map. But first, I've done this quick sketch to figure out the layout of the map. This is just a, a little extra layer of content confidence for me because I'm not quite sure how cheap colored pencils are gonna erase on top of soy sauce. Okay, I'm starting off very lightly with my colored pencils. I'm calling this this map the Dune Sea. Like I said, I, I really love the idea of a, a, a dried up ocean that's now this place to explore. I've started the actual drawing with this sort of circular ridge and really I just had this idea that a giant sandworm tore through the world, like tore it in half and, and there's these ruins of a, a former city or something kind of at the bottom. You know, maybe it's like one of those locations that you can see from everywhere in the desert as a reminder of the, the power of the sandworm. And I, I really like the idea that the, the ruins are smaller than the sort of hole that the sandworm left. So, so even an entire city aren't as big as the, as the crazy huge sandworms. Like I said, I wanted to frame the, the top left corner with this ridge line, and there's a bunch of wind collectors up there. So like maybe the wind is really strong up there. So people have, have used it to harness energy or maybe it's just protected enough from the, the sandworms. I also wanted to add a, a little area of dead trees, like maybe there's a cult or something that are trying to revive the trees with, with no luck. In retrospect, I think the actual drawings of these tree icons are a little bit too big compared to the other elements, but that's okay. Just something to learn for future maps, right? Now, like I've mentioned, these sand dunes are surprisingly tricky to draw. There's a certain kind of swoop you have to get with the uh, initial like peak line that I don't think I nailed on every dune. I should have practiced a little bit more, but I'm also glad that I realized that I could totally erase the colored pencil on top of the soy sauce as long as I wasn't too heavy handed with it. So for the rest of the map, I'm sort of planning out where everything goes very lightly. I've also added these little single dunes. It's just kind of a, a bump with some shading as a, a way to, to fill in some of the negative space. And really after that, it's just fun to add in these other other elements, these other locations. You know, it takes a little bit of time to draw a map like this, not too long actually, but you know, while you're drawing, you're sort of thinking about what these sort of places would be like and what kind of adventures you could get up to when you visit a, an oasis or a dungeon or a, a fort that's on the edge of the sandworm territory. And what I'm really loving about making this map is just adding that little bit of shading. I'm really not getting crazy with it. It's just like, a uh, one extra color, you know, it's like the, the the paper color, the line art color, and then in the middle is the shading. There's not like a ton of different values to it, but it really adds a lot of depth, especially since everything on this map is so tonal. Okay, now it's time for the sandworm illustration. This thing is so fun to draw and really, really not difficult when you break it down into the parts, like a circle for a mouth with a bunch of teeth in the middle and then adding some like kind of mouth fins and then it just has like a sort of bumpy, wavy body. And then it's erupting through a sandstorm in the corner of the map. I think it's just feels so cool being the biggest part of the map. You know, it's kind of decoration, kind of representational of the, the danger that you would find in this dune sea. And really, I'm just loving this brown pencil on the stained paper. It's subtle, but I think it really works at selling this as a, a desert map. You know, it feels sandy or salty because it's, it's soy sauce. <laughs> okay. Let me know what you think of this map down in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, you can visit my online shop or sign up for my Patreon where I release monthly guidebooks. I haven't announced it yet, but this month I'm working on a really fun zine that has a bunch of random city encounters that you can throw into your game when, when your players visit a city or a town. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!